This video introduces the idea of expected value, a concept that can help you evaluate games and life decisions. Suppose I offer you the following game. You get to roll a fair six-sided die, and if a six comes up, you win six dollars. If a five comes up, you win three dollars. If a four comes up, you don't win or lose anything, and if a one, two, or a three comes up, you lose four dollars. So unlike most carnival games, let's assume that I'm not gonna charge you to play this game, right? You can play it for free because I'm like that. So if you wanna decide if this is a good game for you, by that I mean a good game financially, it can be helpful to calculate something called expected value. Expected value can be thought of as your average gain or loss if you play the game a large number of times. Let's say you play 600 times. Let's chart out what we would expect to happen. So I'll put my dice roll here, the outcome when we make that roll here, and the number of times we expect that to happen in my third column. So sometimes you might get lucky and roll a six. When that happens, you'll win $6. And if you're playing 600 times, you expect that to happen about 100 times, one-sixth of the time, since there are six equally likely rolls you can get on the dice. Now, you might also roll a five and win $3, and that will happen roughly 100 times out of 600 also. If a four comes up, you don't win or lose anything. That'll happen about 100 times out of 600. And if a one, two, or three comes up, you lose $4. Now that'll happen about 300 times, right? About half the time, three-sixths of the time. Well, to find the average outcome, I can add up all the money you win and lose over these 600 games and divide by the 600 games. So 100 times, you're gonna win $6, so that's $600, plus 100 times, you'll win $3, 100 times you'll win $0, and 300 times you'll win, or lose actually, $4, so that's a negative four times 300. If I add that all up, 600 plus 300 minus 1200, that works out to minus $300. That's the total change in your money after 600 games. But now to find the average gain or loss, I need to take that total and divide by the number of games, and that works out to negative one half or negative 50 cents. So you'll be losing 50 cents on average each time you play. And you probably didn't wanna play this game anyway, but now you probably really don't wanna play since it has a negative expected value for you. Let me repeat this calculation in a slightly different way. When I found the average outcome, I added up the money and divided by the number of games of 600. But I could have done this also by dividing each term in my sum by 600 separately. So 100 over 600 times six plus 100 over 600 times three plus uh, 100 over 600 times zero, plus 300 over 600 times negative four. The arithmetic works out the same. But simplifying some of those fractions, that's a sixth times six, plus a sixth times three, plus a sixth times zero, plus a half times negative four. These fractions can be thought of as the probabilities of each outcome. While these numbers six, three, zero, and negative four can be thought of as the outcomes themselves. So another way to organize an expected value calculation is to figure out the probability of each outcome and the outcome, multiply those together and add them up. So a sixth of the time, I'm gonna win six dollars because I rolled a sixth. A sixth of the time, I'll win three dollars. A sixth of the time, I'll win zero dollars and half the time I'll lose $4, 
If I do 1 6 times 6 plus 1 6 times 3 plus 1 6 times 0 plus 1 half times negative 4, I'll get the same answer of negative 1 half or a loss of 50 cents per game. Let's do another gambling example. An American roulette game has 38 numbers, 1 through 36, plus 0 and double 0. Some numbers are red and some numbers are black, but 0 and double 0 are neither of these colors, they're green. So one way that you can bet is you can bet on red. So let's say you bet a dollar on red. Then how the game works is if red comes up on the wheel, then you win your dollar back plus another dollar. But if black or a green number comes up, then you lose your dollar. So let's figure out the expected win or loss for this game by charting out the probabilities and outcomes. So first of all, there's some chance that red comes up. Since there are half of the 36 numbers are red, so that's 18 red numbers, but there are 38 numbers altogether because of the zero and double zero, then red will come up on average about 18 out of 38 times. So that's the probability of getting red. If that happens, you get your dollar back plus another dollar, so you, your net is that you've won one dollar. If, however, you don't get red, it becomes a green or a black colored number, then that happens 20 out of 38 times, right? 18 for the black numbers and the two extras for the zero and double zero. And if that happens, then you've ended up losing one dollar. So your expected value is going to be 18 over 38 times 1 plus 20 over 38 times negative 1. That works out to negative 2 over 38 dollars or negative 0 0.0526 dollars or about negative about negative 5.26 cents is what you're going to lose per game. So not a big loss, but it's enough for the casino to make some money over a long night with a lot of people playing roulette. Notice that without the zero and double zero squ uh, squares, if those didn't exist, then your probabilities would be 18 out of 36 or one half and 18 out of 36 or one half for not getting red. In that case, your expected value would be one half times one plus one half times negative one or exactly zero and it would be a fair game. Of course, casinos wouldn't ever run a game like that because they're in the business to make money. Let me give you a similar roulette problem to try on your own. Same board, but this time we're going to bet on a single number. Let's say we bet on the number 17. Well, betting on a single number pays 35 to 1, which means that if you bet a dollar on, say, the number 17 and win, you get your dollar back plus another 35. So you've netted $35. But if you lose, you lose your dollar. Please pause the video and calculate your expected win or loss for betting on the number 17. So if we chart things out, the chance of the wheel landing on the 17 is only 1 out of 38. In that case, we win, we gain $35. But the chance that it doesn't land on a 17 is 37 out of 38. In that case, we lose a dollar. So our expected value is 1 38th times 35 plus 37 38 times negative 1. This works out again to negative 2 over 38, which works out to negative 0 0.0526 dollars or negative 5.26 cents expected value each time you play. In this video, we introduce the notion of expected value. The average outcome if you play a game or some other repeated process many times. We calculated it by finding probabilities times outcomes and adding them up. Although this video focused on games of chance, expected value is super useful in other contexts, like making financial decisions or deciding whether to guess on a test.